Good afternoon, everybody. Good morning to some of you, I think, but um, uh, welcome. Um, first of all, I just wanted to uh, tell a little bit about the context of this presentation that I'm going to make now. Really, um, our experience of market engagement comes specifically from its application within uh, innovation procurement. And uh, I wanted to look quite specifically at a few tools and techniques um, that people can use. So it's one of the questions that people often ask is, yeah, okay, we accept this is a good idea, but how do we do it? How do we do it? So let's begin. Um, so if we're looking at market engagement in the context of innovation procurement, the way in which we have looked at uh, innovation procurement in order to help people to really navigate their way through it is to see it as a three-step process. First of all, really understanding the unmet need and, the, and understanding what it is that you need, what is it that we have now and how does that need to be different in order to deliver effectively the function of this organisation going into the future. And then moving through to uh, a final stage of, OK, how do we effectively buy innovation? Because we need to make sure that new solutions are offered uh, equal opportunity and are not restricted um, in their ability to compete equally with established solutions. And in the middle of this process, there is this thing called market engagement. And really, it's uh, it's for me, I, our experience is it's an absolutely fundamental step um, in breaking down barriers between uh, customers and suppliers within the innovation procurement process. Because um, very often, and this is how it can feel both to a customer and to a supplier, is that there's um, uh, no real chance of effective communication. And very often, Procurement professionals are under a huge amount of pressure and uh, the amount of tenders that they have to be processing. And they don't really have the time to engage with suppliers. Um, so we end up um, very often in this position of, OK, now we really need to get on with um, buying this. And uh, it seemed to work last time. And OK, let's let's get this tender out. And oh, by the way, I need to make some. Um, financial savings, that's what I've been told my job is here. Um, from a supplier's point of view, they're sort of thinking, well, I'm expecting this tender to come out. Um, and I haven't heard anything, I haven't had any feedback, so I'm guessing they want the same thing again, so I better not change what I'm offering. And so it just feels can feel sometimes like a, a bit of a brick wall between these two sides. And the idea of market engagement is very simply um, to find a way of breaking down those barriers of communication in order that um, better options can be, be made available so that uh, public sector organisations, for example, can uh, be better equipped into the future to deliver uh, against various social challenges that are, are often very pressing for them. So let's look quickly at what is market engagement? Well, the way we think about it is of it is pretender communication, engagement and consultation with the supply chain as a whole. So it's all the activity of talking to a supplier or supply chain in advance of a tendering process. Um, what it isn't, and I think it's really important to uh, stress this, it isn't an assessment in any way of an individual supplier, nor is it an evaluation process. It's a look at the supply chain as a whole. And it's the opportunity for a customer to present what we refer to as a credible demand. Um, because if a supplier is going to engage in delivering something different, as a customer, we need to convince them that it's really worth their time. Um, and we need to use this market engagement process as a way of presenting a credible demand and convincing the supply chain that we're serious as a customer. And that means that our approach to it has to be very um, professional and it has to be very uh, thoughtfully done. 
when it comes down to it, these are the three things I think we're looking at in market engagement. Capacity of the supply chain to deliver what you need, its capability and its appetite to deliver what it's needed, when you need it, and also importantly at a price that reflects the value that you place on it as a customer. And what we're trying to achieve with market engagement? Well, a number of things really, but fundamentally we're trying to understand what is the state of the market so that we can go forward and design an effective tendering approach. If the market, if you're actually asking for something new and ambitious in order to deliver, for example, really pressing carbon targets that you've got to deliver, um, or it might be that you've got you've got whole new social challenges that you're facing. Um, is this feasible? Is, can we deliver exactly what we're actually looking for? We're serious about buying this. Can it be delivered? And also, can it be delivered in the time frames that we are thinking about? It's important, I think, in certainly within innovation pro procurement to understand this. What is the supply side perspective? So it gets them, helps them to help us to understand what gets in the way in our procurement process and how can we change perhaps our procurement process to deliver um, what it is that we need. And I think from a point of view of innovation procurement, it's really important that we provide advance notice about forthcoming innovation procurements, because after all, suppliers do need time to innovate. And people often ask me, how do um, suppliers respond to wanting you know, conversation? It's just overwhelmingly positive. And this phrase um, that I, I've got there, this is gold dust for a supplier, um, is directly from the words of a supplier who's sitting next to me in a meeting, a supply chain meeting. And he just nudged me and said, this is gold dust. This is exactly what we need. We need to understand what you need so that we can help you to deliver it. And by the end of a market engagement process, um, the team is going to really have a very clear understanding. This is our experience. You know, you really get important insights that helps you to refine your specification. And also you get some very valuable information about the market conditions that will favour the delivery of the outcomes that you're looking for. So it really helps you to design a useful and effective tendering strategy. And all the way through this presentation, what I want to keep saying is that this is a two way process. It's not just about getting a message out to the supply chain. It is a two way process. So. What is clear is that we um, if, if you're actually in this position, sorry, the buttons, I think I, this is a previous version, Sylvia, I'd solved this problem earlier, but don't worry. Um, so if you're actually saying, well, hang on, we really know now that we want to go about uh, this by engaging with the supply chain. Um, one of the questions that people are going to ask is, are we allowed to do this? Have we got time to do it? And by the way, how should we do it? Um, and I think we know now that there's a, a not only is the value of market engagement, but the encouragement of uh, pretender market engagement uh, within uh, the legal frameworks. Um, but one of the things that isn't in the legal frameworks is how should we do it? Apart from, of course, we should always be careful of maintaining a level playing field. What are the tools and techniques that can help customers feel comfortable and confident about moving forward? Well, first of all, um, I think we've got to be uh, prepared. Um, that helps you to feel confident going forward, making sure that you understand the current situation, that you've got a genuine unmet need, that you've carefully understood what outcomes you're looking for, that within the organisation your stakeholders are consulted and are on board, you've got leadership backing, um, so that you feel, can feel confident going out saying yes, not only, for example, do we have this need, but we've also started talking to other people and we've discovered that there is a wider market demand. And then moving through into the market engagement process. 
we can think of that as a um, series of steps. So, for example, what we would often do is start with market sounding. So that's a written communication with the market to get um, get the message out there and to get good responses back from the supply chain in written form. Um, being really proactive about the way in which we communicate that. Obviously, we these days, you everyone will see that we're using prior information notices as a really common way of getting a, a, a launching a market engagement and market sounding process. But that is not really enough in and of itself. We, what we need to do is to be very proactive in the way we get that message out to the market. And then, of course, once we've got the message out, we have to understand what the market is saying. Moving through perhaps then saying, OK, actually, we need some more information. We need to dig a little bit deeper. Let's have a market consultation workshop. And then finally, at the end of the process, to be able to produce a market engagement report that really clearly sets out, this is what we've learned. This is what we've understood. Um, and now we feel much more confident moving through into our tendering process, knowing that, it, for example, it is possible. There is appetite. We can, we can do this. Uh, and if we look at some of the key principles, Genuine unmet need is really important. Maintaining transparency, always respecting confidentiality, starting early, um, starting as early as you can, and showing in the way in which you operate that you understand the things that motivate suppliers. And of course, always that it's remembering it's a two way uh, flow of information. So some of the tools that we use for market sounding, um, the, a fundamental one is the market sounding prospectus. Um, but we also then have a response form, which means we can codify the responses and get some kind of consistency in seeing what the supply chain comes back with. It's not essential, but it, we found it to be really helpful. A good landing page for suppliers, a good web page, where you can keep up to date all the information and last but definitely not least a prior information notice to launch the market sounder and here's just an example of what you might include inside um, a market sounding prospectus but really what we're saying is that the process of actually writing that document helps to bring clarity and consensus in the team and not only that, it then becomes a very good vehicle for communicating out into the market what it is you're looking for. And here's another example. So just moving through the prior information notice we've talked about, and I'll pull out here the, thing, the thought that when we use CPV codes, when we're going out in, in terms of um, innovation, we might want to be more broad in our scope of the CPV codes that we're using to make sure we get a, a maximum, maximize our response. An effective response form and actually writing a response form really means that you get clear, what questions do I want to ask the market? What information do I need? Um, what am I looking for? Here's an example of uh, a web page, which I think is really important that that's kept up to date. And I mentioned proactive communication, and I like to think of it as a marketing exercise. It's doing everything you can using social media, perhaps writing articles, getting the message out. Um, and indeed, we've also uh, experimented with using artificial intelligence searches. Um, so that we can really dig out some uh, small and medium sized enterprises that might not necessarily hear about this in by other means. Market consultation events are extremely valuable and people I know can get very nervous about these events thinking will they will suppliers actually talk to each other and will they actually respond. I think what's important to note here is that it's not about asking suppliers to divulge their confidential information. It is about um, understanding, as I mentioned before, not what is necessarily available from each and individual supplier, but understanding the state of the market. And who comes to a market consultation event? Well, of course, um, the supply side, 
um, potential suppliers, but also it's really useful to have interest groups, um, uh, SME and innovation bodies, trade organizations, they can be very valuable participants as well. From the buyer side, um, it's really good to have the whole of the um, project team available to, and to introduce them to buyers, but also to bring on board other potential um, buyers, other people who may be interested um, so to demonstrate that there is a wider demand. So if we come back to thinking about market engagement as a process, um, we'll have a lot of very useful information. We'll have written that into and, and cons put that together inside a market consultation report or market engagement report that then starts to make recommendations as to, OK, what does this tell us about our specification? What does this tell us about our tendering approach? What kind of award criteria? Um, how can we help suppliers overcome the barriers that they've highlighted? Um, and that, so that means it, we become a real active participant in helping to create the market conditions to enable innovation to come forward. And then at the end of that process, we're saying, OK, now, do we have sufficient information to proceed? Is the market ready for this? And if so, we can move forward into our pro-innovation tendering process. And one thing I would say is that if all of the work that you've done up to this point can get lost very easily if we don't think carefully about how to create um, a tendering strategy that enables suppliers of new solutions to play in, to compete equally on a level playing field with established solutions. Um, and maybe, I don't know, maybe that'll be the subject of another uh, webinar. Okay. Um, so just to summarize um, and to conclude, we can go out to the market with a clear message saying, okay, what we were doing before didn't work. And we've talked to people and we think we've got a credible demand and for this new solution. This is what we need to offer. Uh, this is what we need you to uh, provide us and we need it within three years. So we're giving them a time frame. we're giving them time what are our options is what we're asking. And in the back of our minds as a customer, it's inevitable that we'll be thinking, oh no, will it be delivered? Will it be too expensive for us? And oh, will it take longer to implement? And, and anyway, I have no idea who could supply this, but okay, let's, let's ask that question. From a supplier's point of view, what they're really thinking, okay, before I invest my time, before I invest in coming forward with a solution, are they serious about this? So for the customer, it's all about confidence that a solution will be provided. And for suppliers, it's all about the credibility of the customer. And thanks very much. Um, stay in touch. I would also say, uh, highlight this, um, the point of, um, that our next, one of the things, one of the ways in which people could present a credible demand to the market is by demonstrating a wider market, that there are other buyers um, with the same need. And uh, I'd just like to take the opportunity to advertise our next um, webinar, which is on that subject of building uh, demand in the market. And that's on the 17th of May. Thanks very much.